In summary, anatomic lumbar spinal stenosis is an extremely common finding in people over the age of 60, where it is present in about one in three people. However, symptomatic lumbar spinal stenosis is quite uncommon, and it is only present in between five and 10% of those people with anatomic lumbar spinal stenosis. For those that have symptoms, symptoms can vary from back pain, leg pain, numbness, weakness, and balance problems that are made worse with standing and walking and relieved with sitting. Most people with lumbar spinal stenosis have relatively stable symptoms, and many people will experience fluctuation of symptoms or gradual improvement of symptoms over time. Rare people will have complete resolution of symptoms, while some people are unfortunate, not because of anything they've done right or wrong or that we know about, but they will get worse over time. Please don't become too alarmed with some of the jargon and terms that we use. Many of the words sound very ominous, words like degenerative disc disease, large disc herniation, etc. These don't always mean that you're going to require surgery or that you're going to become paralyzed. These are often much worse sounding than they really are. I educate people that even though they have degenerative changes on their MRI scans that it isn't dangerous. I usually give them a more hopeful message. I think they could be doing better and possibly feeling better. And I give them permission to gradually get back into moving and doing things. Exercise is the intervention that's shown to make the biggest difference in pain and function in people who have lumbar spinal stenosis. We treat spinal stenosis patients with active, intensive rehabilitation. Exercise and function is safe for patients with stenosis, and so what we do is actually initiate a process with the patient of helping them to identify with us what they enjoy doing, biking, walking, swimming, and we guide them to begin to progress that outside the clinic so they can enjoy some of their community activities with their family. If you've tried anti-inflammatory medications, spinal injections and physical therapy, and none of that seems to be working, or it worked at one time and no longer is working, then we start talking about surgery. My patients often ask me, what would you do, doc, if you were faced with this problem? And I like to think about it this way. I ask yourself the question, am I taking pills every day? Do the symptoms affect me and keep me from doing what I want to do every day? Does it keep me awake at night? Can I not interact with my family the way I want to? Remember that most of these decisions don't need to be made on an emergency basis. These problems may be affecting you significantly, but most of the time it's not an emergency. You have time to think about it and get additional opinions. We believe that it is essential that you understand these basic facts about lumbar spinal stenosis. For many people, this helps them make a rational decision about what the best course of action is for them.